there is a beauty, an almost artistic purity, that lifts fishing to the level of an art form through the act of fly fishing. It is not just the sinuous grace of the unfurling fly line above a mountain pool at daybreak on a crisp morning. Um, hang on a minute. I got to be Fulton, Mr. Isaac Walton. As isn't this just a bit sexist? I know the Victorian woman's place was in the kitchen, the bedroom and by the trout stream, but this is somewhat ridiculous. If that's Mr. Darcy, why shame on him? Well, at least he heated sun-safe fashion attire. Now, um, where was I? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. The act of fly fishing itself, with the pursuit of the imitation of nature, to a certain extent resembles the artist's endless portraits of the natural world, to create wonderful replicas of insects and creatures that populate the natural world using horsehair, fur, tinsel, bird, feathers, a something from some roadkill, is a whimsical and fantastic act. If the Vikings, by way of digression, had have taken fly fishing seriously and actually tied flies, it would have put them in touch with their gentler impulses of the creative and the artistic side. Because, let's face it, it's difficult to fly into a homicidal rage when tying a woolly bugger. Though, the berserkers would probably have preferred the whole blood-drenched beast on a hook rather than a delicate strand of their fur or hair. As we know, the Vikings, of course, didn't like things easy. They demanded a life that was constantly in a state of threat and challenged. A challenge that could hurl them into Valhalla. They thrived on the hard and the difficult. So how difficult is it to catch a flathead fly fishing? I personally would say it's easy. And that is why it was not a pastime pursued by those surly, plundering folk. Now Peter, the trout fisher, said that it was difficult to catch them with a fly outfit. And as a fly adept, he has proven himself proficient with fly gear. But surely his claim needs to be investigated, and investigated in the field. The hypothesis needs to be empirically tested. So, fly fishermen, actually, are there any fly fisherwomen? I must admit I have not seen, or to be honest, met one. But in case they exist, which I'm sure they do, I might refer to fly fisher folk. I like the word folk, it has the connotation of harvest festivals, morris dancing, Celtic dirges about drowning sailors, and ritual sacrifices. And when fly folk are kitted up like dandies, they would certainly look at home at a folk festival. The lonely dances upon the mountain brook. Cue the Led Zeppelin acoustic tune. Now, the empirical testing of the hypothesis that the caper at hand will be difficult. So firstly, out in the field, how does Peter go trying to catch flathead fly fishing off the bank? You can just see the shadow of a large brim fleeing and then bunking down under a log. Massive brim sitting under that log. Try and drift the fly downstream into it. A subtly presented bait may have been the most successful enticement, but the morbid inactivity of bait soaking was not our want. Getting there. The brim declined Peter's invitation, obviously. The water was shallow, clear, and difficult. There, I use the word difficult. Yeah, that's right. Went right past his nose, he has no idea. No interest. 
I'm just there. So then Peter attempted to seduce Whiting. Why seduce? Well, fly casters are a naughty, blue and salacious lot as they do an awful lot of stripping. I've definitely spotted quite a few of them up. Never. No luck with the whiting. Still too difficult. But guess what? Yep, that's right. Here we go. So fly casting for flathead off the bank. The easiest prospect. The hypothesis is put to the skeptical sword at this point in time. Fly casting for flathead is easy. That's a good bloody. It is. It's a great bloody. It's a great bloody. This is where your um, fly comes into its own in these conditions. Yeah. Now our second field of investigation sees Peter now fishing from the prow with the good craft, the cosmic pessimism, on a raised drifting platform. Surely this could potentially have its difficulties. Here Peter took up position on the casting deck with his fly rod. In this case we tried drifting across the flats. This meant Peter faced all the wind problems that hamper fly casting, and flathead of course are camouflaged to the point of invisibility on the bottom. So you cannot follow the standard fly casting practice of spying and then sight casting to your target. It's literally casting blindly and randomly in the windy bluster on a rocking moving boat. Ultra difficult scenario one assumes. Well, not quite. We all know the flathead will be where a feed is and that is wherever there are bait fish or whiting. What is the big magnet for whiting? Nipper beds. They attract floats, blokes with nipper pumps they will also attract whiting, as those blokes with pumps are pumping them because they are the number one culinary treat for whiting. So, seriously, did that look difficult? Oh, I'd drop that level down to easy as well. So we've seen off the bank, out of a boat. How could you make fly fishing for flathead even more difficult? Or is it difficult? Well, Peter added a new element after catching this flathead. Nope, he's not blessing the water or attempting to raise some loaves and fishes. He is fly casting from a brand new kayak, standing up on it. Now we won't call that stable beast the Bismarck as he hates that. Even though it makes my poultry kayak seem like a plastic paddle pop stick in comparison. Wait till I get some torpedoes strapped to the side of mine. Um, mayhem across the waters. So standing in a kayak, not quite a trapeze, but the action of fly casting while standing in a kayak certainly must up the level of difficulty substantially. So how does Peter describe the whole experience of fishing for flathead out of a kayak? Okay, so here we go. I've got good size flathead on fly, six weight rod, standing up in my kayak, fighting it without any problems whatsoever. That has to be an admission of the ease of the caper of fly fishing for flathead. No wonder the Vikings shunned such pursuits. Just don't want to drop him. Not easy with an eight-foot rod in a kayak, gotta say. There we go. So, fly fishing for, for flathead. Let's brand it as reasonably easy. But having said all that, I suggest you just jump into a kayak with a clutch of lures and do what I do. Bugger the beauty and the grace. A behemoth sitting atop a piece of plastic, skull-dragging in dinner. 
which probably rates one step above the holidaying bogan fat daddy and his enormous bayliner dragging his obese kiddies behind it as chiropractic bait while giving the chubby middle finger salute to all the other users of the waterway that he belligerently discomforts and bullies. So he catches a fish standing in a kayak and now you just can't get him to sit down. Pops up like a jack-in-the-box every time we stop paddling. This grass is a nuisance. Yeah, that's about as good as it gets this morning. Now, to demonstrate the joys of fly casting in a kayak. Are you ready, focus? Yeah. There's better be a one metre plus flathead. <laughs> the water's freezing. It's, it's, it's in fact. It might be colder than yesterday. There's certainly not as much uh, mullet around. There's none. Tropical spa on stream somewhere. Look, the next fish you have catch will have thermals on. Over there or boats? Where the yellow sign is, just off there? Um, don't know. Could be half-frozen seals. Okay, that's it doesn't look like a metre plus flatty. <laughs> 